Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist, and my mission is to use this space to bring content to you to help you understand your struggle with food and break free from binge eating. And today's video is all about the desire to lose weight. So I get a lot of questions and a lot of messages from people who are really unhappy with their weight and they're struggling with binge eating. Now, if you're someone who follows quite a bit of content and other people out there who are also talking about binge eating recovery, what you find you will come up against over and over again is people saying, do not focus on weight, let go of the desire to lose weight. And that's all very good advice and there's gonna be plenty of advice in this video, but I wanna start off by saying, don't take my word for anything I say in this video. Everybody is unique. Everybody's bodies and brains respond differently to weight loss. And you can hear good advice and we're not very good at taking advice, even when it sounds like you know, pretty sound advice. The things that really shift and make a difference are the things we discover for ourselves. So anything I might say in this video, mull it around, but test it out for yourself and see what happens. So the first question I would ask anybody who's really saying, I really want to lose weight and I don't think I can give up that desire to lose weight, is to consider the question, what happens to your eating when you focus on weight loss? It's as simple as that. Maybe you've had a reaction straight away with some answers that have come up in your mind, but I urge you to take that question away and really mull it over and really start to notice. What happens for a lot of people is when they focus on weight loss, their eating gets worse. The binging becomes more visceral. You're going to bed every night, making all these promises to yourself about how you're gonna eat in a deficit the next day. It's the last thing in your brain when you fall asleep. So your brain is going to sleep, anticipating deprivation for the next day. And this is the cycle. But unless you see this cycle for yourself and really see what's happening in your life, what I say might sound a bit true, but isn't really gonna impact at the deep level because this stuff goes deep. You have been taught, probably from a very young early age, to highly value weight loss. And that is being reinforced over and over again in society. So this is like a belief that weight loss is a very valuable pursuit that is almost like right in the cells of your body. And this is why the only way to start making shifts in your, this area of your recovery is to discover things about you for yourself. And this sounds fairly straightforward, but it involves being really honest with ourselves because we're going to end up in this kind of conflict where what if I'm noticing that every time I focus on weight loss, my eating becomes chaotic, but there's part of me that really, really wants to lose weight and doesn't want to let go of that. You've got these two parts competing. And because of all the moral values that have been placed around weight loss, keep pushing the part that recognizes what's happening. You keep pushing it inside and going, no, 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 I just need to get my head on straight. I just need to focus on this. I just need some more inspiration. I just need some more motivation. I just need to try harder. I need to work on more habits, whatever it is that you start telling yourself, because actually you don't want to be honest with yourself and look at what's really happening. Now this is difficult and it's painful to do because our brains protect us from what we don't want to see. Humans, we have this terrible habit of believing what we want to believe. So when some information comes to us that we don't like and contradicts what we want, that I think is where people get stuck with this stuff. So this is not me sitting here saying, if you focus on weight loss, it's all gonna fall apart. It's about you taking that question away and saying, what happens when I'm focusing on weight loss compared to when I'm not? So if we think about this desire, so another question I'll get a lot is from people who have realized that yes, this is a problem. Yes, this makes it much more difficult. My eating falls apart when I focus on weight loss. So then the next question they want to know is, well, how do I stop focusing on weight loss? And all those people out there who are saying, you've got to let go of any desire to ever, ever lose weight again. And you might have one of those kind of light bulb moments where you're, it's so clear to you how it's a problem and you're like, okay, I'm gonna put this aside. And then the next day or a week or whatever, somehow the old thinking has found its way back in again and you can't quite get back to that place that you were before. First of all, I think we need to be realistic that this desire is not going anywhere. 
If you're somebody who has managed to completely rid yourself of the desire to lose weight, please send me a message and tell me how you did it so we can share it with the world. I have not completely relinquished the desire to lose weight. What I have to do is manage that desire. So a little bit, if we think about this idea of desire just being something we really want, if we take something like um, sexual desire, like you can feel that desire, but if it's not appropriate to act on it in that moment, we have to kind of manage those feelings and, 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 and get on with it and be like, I can't act out every time I have a sexual urge. And so it's a little bit like this, it's noticing and maybe even acknowledging that this desire may not go anywhere for a long time. Maybe it never leaves. But recognizing you have this desire, accepting that the desire is there. Because so often people, they feel like they've failed at recovery because that desire has come up again. Maybe you've been able to let it go before in the past. And now that it's back, it's another way to beat yourself up and say, I'm never going to be able to recover from binge eating because I can't even let go of this desire to lose weight. And so what people want when they send me a question about how do I let go of the desire to lose weight or even when can I lose weight or any of these questions about it, you're, it's like we're reaching out because we want someone to give us a magical answer that's going to make this feel better for us. Now hopefully some of my content is thought provoking enough to make these teeny tiny shifts or maybe like thinking about something in a slightly different way. But there is nothing that I can say to you that is going to rid you from this desire to lose weight. There's nothing that I can say that's going to shift that belief at the cellular level. That is an inside job and we get very carried away about looking out that we just need to find the right content, we need to follow the right person, we need to find the right therapist. Like out there somewhere is an answer for us that's going to lead us out of this chaos of binge eating. And actually that capacity to go inwards and look where we don't want to look. There's that old, I don't know if it's a proverb or a quote, where they talk about the treasure you seek is in the cave you fear to enter. So it's much easier to look out there to try and find the answer than actually to go into the cave and be brutally honest with ourselves. Because what if we have this desire to lose weight and it's with us for the rest of our lives and it never gets satisfied? that can sound like quite a scary prospect. That's something that I, for the most part, have just made my peace with, that it's just gonna be there. My body's not gonna be the size and shape that that part of me that desires it to be a certain way wants it to be. So if we're trying to manage this desire, you know, what this kind of brings us around to is the idea of body acceptance and weight acceptance. And how the heck are you supposed to accept something when it goes against something you strongly desire? The thing is with acceptance is, and I think I've talked about this before, but acceptance is about now. So many of the people out there are saying, and, and particularly like the intuitive eating purists are saying, you have to let go of the desire to ever, ever, ever want to lose weight ever. It's not, it can't even be on the horizon. For me, I just don't think that's realistic. Again, like if you've got some advice about how to do that, you know, let me know. I'm always open to changing and developing my thinking on this. But actually, the, way, the only way I've found acceptance can work for me is if I just accept now. And now, if I focus on weight loss, my eating gets a bit chaotic again. Um, so I'm not saying that I will never pursue weight loss in the future. I don't know. All I know is that in the me that I am here and now today, when I do, it's problematic for me. So I know this goes against a lot of the conventional thinking because it'd be like, well, if you think that weight loss is even happening in the future, that's going to provoke the scarcity deprivation mindset now. And I don't think that's necessarily true. Quite often when I work with people, we just talk about the idea of putting weight loss on the back burner for a bit. You know, are you willing to just put it back for a month? or a week or even a day and just watch what happens. You need to become your own experiment, that willingness to try certain things out and see what works for you rather than following someone else's program because what happens is you then become very black and white about following their rules and the whole diet mentality can play out even with a freedom program because it becomes another thing to pass or fail at rather than treating it with curiosity which comes back to that willingness to be really honest with ourselves 
and confront the things that we don't want to be true. And just because something is true for you today doesn't mean it will always be true. That for me is the part that makes acceptance easier. I can honestly say I don't know if my body is going to change or not. My only job is to look after myself today. And the thing is, I kind of just want to loop this in with responsibility a little bit. So this idea of taking personal responsibility, is that it sounds scary and it sounds almost a bit self-punishing because the typical binge eater is somebody that takes responsibility for everybody else. They're the people pleasers, they're trying to manage other people's emotions, they're trying to behave in the way that they think people want them to behave. So they're taking all this responsibility out there and it's exhausting, it's not fun, it feels like an obligation. And the part that they don't take responsibility is actually the looking after themselves or treating themselves as somebody who deserves to be taken care of. The other bit around responsibility, people who struggle with this stuff, will take responsibility for anything other than the moment. So by beating yourself up about the past, about what you've eaten, you're taking responsibility for something that's done and dusted. There's nothing you can do now about anything you've eaten up to this point. Or you take responsibility for the future by planning what you're gonna eat for the next day, month, year, rest of your life. I'm gonna give up sugar forever. Like those kind of grand things, you're trying to take responsibility for something that hasn't happened and you don't know how you're gonna be feeling in the future. And by taking responsibility for the past and the present, give up responsibility in the moment. And the moment's the only time when we really have a choice, where we can really tune into like um, making a decision. So I have actually done a video, I'll link it above, uh, about taking personal responsibility. And I've had a few people say actually, they didn't want to watch this video because they thought it was going to be me kind of you know, opening a can of whoop ass on you and saying, you need to take personal responsibility. No, it's a very, very gentle approach. And actually it's, it's liberating because the thing is you are taking too much responsibility in areas that are beyond your control and not enough responsibility in areas, the small areas that actually are in your control. So the balance is just out. You are not irresponsible. You're too responsible, but it's in the wrong place. And now I'm veering off into another subject, but I'm feeling quite fired up about this subject today because it's such a block for so many people. Um, so I'm going to leave it here today and hopefully what I've said has been helpful. Um, feel free to get in touch with your comments. When you leave comments and likes here, it really does kind of help the YouTube algorithm. But I get it that leaving a public comment about this stuff can just not feel comfortable at all. So only do what you're comfortable with, but likes and all that just kind of help me grow the channel. On that note, take care of yourselves and I will see you on the next video.